Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How we all doing today? Hope we all have a safe and productive week. All right, today's video is gonna be on the removal of a non-condensing heat exchanger. So that would be like the V or the RL series unit, not the RUR or the RU or the Sensei series. That will be in a later video. All right, what we have here, we have an external unit but I do have an internal unit heat exchanger and chassis and air box to show you the difference <clears throat> in the two units. Okay, so basically what's happening? You're getting a leak into the chassis, most likely out, of course, either on the ground or inside the house, and something within the heat exchanger, either the tubing, the hot and cold water feed, the mix, the actual heat exchanger, the um, thermistor has formed some type of hole. Now, it could be lack of maintenance, it could be a manufacturer's defect, but I, like I very rarely see that. Most of it is lack of maintenance, or was the unit damaged like mine due to a hurricane? Okay, so what do we want to do? Well, in this case, we want to shut the power off. If it's an interior unit, unplug it. Exterior unit, disconnect power. Switch, knife switch, or if it's in a plug with an in-use cover, unplug it. You have to shut off the gas and shut off the water because you've got to disconnect the gas and you've got to disconnect the water. We're taking this entire thing apart. All right? So, we have the gas off, we have the water off, and we have the power disconnected. All right. Now... What I like to do first is to remove the wiring. I like to get the wires out, I like to get the PC board out, I like to get the igniter out, get all the stuff that um, is delicate. Now, in some cases, with a leaking heat exchanger, if it's really bad, it could form a, a bit of heat inside and melt the coating on the PC board, and the PC board ends up being shorted out. So besides you having a leak coming from the axle chassis, you also, um, there's no, nothing on the display, nothing on the controller. There's no power. All right? So let's get started. You want to um, disconnect your igniter, pull your wires out. We're going to start pulling all of the um, little pink wire ties off because they're attached to screws and those screws will be removing. I'm going to go over the tools, what we need, but you definitely are going to need at least two, if not three, magnetic trays. <clears throat> and you're going to need rags, you're going to need a Dremel with um, a wire wheel on it. You're going to need, of course, your full array of tools. You're going to need your parts bin box, so, first thing we want to do is disconnect. Just start disconnecting your wires. Remember, on a Renai, the connectors only mate to one another. So you cannot cross-connect one con uh, wire to another. All right, so we have our igniter, and that's off the bracket. So your igniter, you have your, your power cable, and your igniter, and I'm I take it right off the bracket because you're going to need this. You're not getting a new bracket with the um, new heat exchanger. And I have a new heat exchanger. And we're going to show you the whole thing. Get this to mister out. But remember, there's a small O-ring in this the mister, which you're going to have to have extra. But I'll show you what comes in the actual heat exchanger. So here's your thermistor, your retention cable, undo your wires. So there's your thermistor and there is the retention clip which I just dropped and your two tiny little screws. All right, now, so 
this start pulling apart your electrical connectors. Because the more you disconnect here on the actual unit while it's still mounted inside of the chassis will make it a heck of a lot easier for you when you start taking this apart. Now I'm going to try to stay out of the way and show you as much as I can without blocking there's another thermistor and hopefully everything will fall if you drop anything inside of the actual chassis so you don't have to go fishing around for this We got this round screw here on the burner. Throw all your screws in your magnetic tray. And now there should be just a bunch of wires coming from the actual water sensor and the last ground <coughs> you're going to have to do this anyway if you're going to be removing your PC board alright so all the wires are disconnected Take off this plastic shroud. It's a heck of a lot easier to get to the screws. Now you've got a screw all the way in the back. I'm going to take the camera off and point out everything. There's the screw. And then the PC board falls into a right here falls into that pin and there's the screw in the back see how filthy this is again this is a you know condemned karaoke unit that I use all right so now your wiring is done your wiring is out all right we want to take off our igniter take out the igniter you're going to get a new all right, I'm going to use my drill for this one so we can speed up this. But I suggest you don't use a drill. Use your screwdriver. I happen to have this gyro activated. So when I move my wrist, I can move it ever so slightly to get the screws out. So I know the pressure that I'm putting on this to put the screws back in. But I highly recommend use a screwdriver good laser tip laser cut tip screwdriver all right so here are our igniter and our flame rods and I'll show you how filthy this is so you're going to be replacing this gasket that comes with the heat exchange, not the plate. <clears throat> Look how filthy. This is your flame rod. Flame rod and igniter. See how filthy? Even the heat exchange is going to be atrocious in there. <clears throat> All right. Now we want to take off okay this is an RL series unit this is going to have two screws on the gas valve let me grab I brought everything with me <clears throat> this is an R series gas valve you see there's three screws one center and two 
but on this RL series, they're the same screws. They're number eight machine screws with a, 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 a self-center and Phillips in the middle. So you see, self-center, it's a number eight, and it has a Phillips in the middle. Also, with the RL to the R, you have one igniter and one flame rod, opposed to two flame rods and an igniter. All right, now we want to start taking the burner off. These are going to be the longer screws. There's going to be long screws and short screws, and I'll show you the difference. So what I'm taking off right now are the long screws. They have to go through this thick burner plate into the sheet metal. When you take off this actual burner plate, you're going to, and I'm not going to start recovering screws, actually that one's simple, because we're not going to get into the reassemble of this. We don't want to spend all day here. And there's the burner. So that's the burner. Here's your solenoids, gas solenoids for low and high fire. Okay, now we want to remove this burner plate. These are the shorter screws. I'm going to take this screw out. I'm going to grab one of these screws and show you the difference. See, I'll see if I can get my finger. See the difference in the screws? They are a tad bit longer, but you have to remember that those screws are going to be for this top burner, the short ones, and you're going to put this back together in the opposite way you took it off. So this is going to go back on first. Now you have these two clips here. that you're going to have to kind of just angle this out. Now, the gaskets. You have this gasket and that gasket. When we open up the heat exchanger box, you're going to see that, there, that it comes with all new gaskets. And one of the things, if you're on an outsider, should go. Now you want to take out the burner. The burner is two screws. These recess right here. You're going to go back and pick out the screws. But you want to remove the fan first. Because if you drop a screw, can't talk with that in my mouth. If you drop a screw, it's going to end up in the fan. So take the fan out. You have to take it out anyway. Because you're going to be putting this in the new heat exchanger. And it's the best thing to do is to check the fan. How dirty it is. Is it spinning freely? See how much stuff just came out of it. So you want to check that. You can see how much damage you have done in here by just looking at it. All right, you don't have to touch the gas valve. You can leave that alone. All right, you're gonna have to take off these heat, these uh, fr freeze protection. Again, put it someplace safe. Now, you need a light, because you wanna get it, you gotta get in there and get these screws out. Well, I'll show you because it appears that they're out already. These things are sent to me. They're out already. Look at that, I removed screws without even a screwdriver. You see these two holes? Here and here? 
I wonder if this thing was working without the screws in it. And they made up the two holes back here. And that's what these two little recesses are for. To get your screwdriver in to get those screws out. So now you got your fan. And I'm going to put that here because that fan is probably full of junk. All right. So now you got pretty much the whole, pretty much everything that you're going to reuse. Because you're going to be we're going to be taking off these um, uh, thermal fuse and be putting it on the new um, heat exchanger. All right. Now we want to take off our. clips here now that hold the heat exchanger on now the heat exchangers are pretty much seized in here with the o-ring you're going to get new o-rings you're not going to get these new retention clips so you're going to have to either clean them off or change them so these retention clips there's two of them, identical. You're going to have to reuse this. Put the screws, but you're going to get new O-rings. Then we have one more right here. And that is the mixing valve. So now we're going to have to try to wiggle out. Now, it doesn't matter what damage you do to this, because you're putting a new heat exchanger in. So, you got to try to wiggle this out and see I'm crushing the copper, but it doesn't matter, but it will matter if you're going to be you're going to be like changing the water servo valve. Man, that's a dickens in there. See what I mean? See how tough they're in there? Now, if you were just replacing this water servo valve, you can't do that. You gotta be very delicate. You gotta be moving this thing like a jeweler. Because you can't be bending this heat exchanger around. Remember, this one is getting replaced. Okay. So, we now have to remove two back screws. You know, when you have blind, it's always good to have a light. Okay, look what I found. Here are the two screws for the burner. So somebody did remove this burner. All right, now, these are the only screws holding this heat exchanger in. Again, like I put on other videos, I like this DeWalt table. And we set this table up, would be set up right as we're working. Give me a second, I want to grab my water. All right. Now, so, oh, you like my new little pointer? 
No more screwdriver. So these are the only screws holding this in right here. Those two screws. There you go. There's the heat exchanger. So this is what you're taking out. Now, we got to get this thermal fuse off. So this thermal fuse wraps all the way around. You see all the white? Wraps all the way around, black. Heats, that's all got to come off. So let's put the camera where you can see. Grab another screwdriver. And let's take off this one first. And this is just um, sitting on the face on a piece of copper. I'll show it to you in a second. There's no, it's not like the thermistor. So we want to remove these, this clip, remove this wire. Now you got to go around. Again, take your smartphone, take a picture of it. So you have a photo of where it's got to go. But you see this one here, it's just, it's just this one clip right here that you got to take off. So take a photo of it. Now you got these two back clips and then these two side clips. And just be careful. Don't go pulling this wire. It is delicate. That's your clip. So this is your thermal fuse. Now, if this thermal fuse say malfunctioned and you have to replace it. You have to pull the heat exchanger out. All right, so now we want to take off this rubber gasket and then you got to remove this front pet face plate, the exhaust port. is a short like sheet metal screw just remember that the long screws are for the gas valve so now you got to take that off so now your heat exchanger let's go back to and see how much dirt gets on here all right this is going to be the box that you're going to get with the for the heat exchanger at the top of the box they always put the the gasket for this plate. So you see you have the gasket for this plate. See it's kind of like almost like a it's like a head gasket for a car. That's always at the top. Then you're going to get your instructions on what to do. So it's one page and in the back, then another page and nothing in the back. So it's three pages. Then some packing material, 
more gaskets and there's the gasket for the the um now i didn't bring this is for our um an r series so i'll show you the one here on the floor in a minute so for the r series you only have one flame sensor and one igniter but you get a new gasket here is your thermistor o-rings here is your o-rings you have gas o-rings do you have o-rings for the well see this is one the other one has two. So you're going to have new O-rings. Then you're going to have new gaskets for the actual plates. And then new gasket for the burner. That comes in these bags. Then your heat exchanger. And see what I meant? You have to take that fan housing off and remount it to the bottom. You have to remount the plate, get a new gasket. Then you have to put your, here's your, here's that um, heat sensor right here. Here's the thermistor right here. And then your O-rings go on to here. So I'll show you the actual heat exchanger and I'll show you the difference in the actual heat exchanger for an interior model. Let me just get this back together. So this was the heat exchanger, but this is of course interior. And we're going to go through this right now. So on an interior model, you're going to have let me get this camera back up. You're going to have this fan box, which is right here. And you're going to have your exhaust, which goes right there. Actually, it goes like that. Because you kind of say drain. All right, goes out your right hand side. So the fan box has to come off. So the fan box gets mounted through here. Then there's a plate that mounts the front. There's screws in the back. There's nothing on the side, but there's three screws on this side. Okay, and then there's a plate that mounts, can we see? Yeah, then there's a plate that mounts to the front that holds this all in together. Then there's, and I'm going to take, I'm going to pick up the, uh, so you have these two holes, you have th this hole, this hole here, you have two, actually it's better that way, two, four holes, and then you have those three right there. That's what's holding this heat exchanger on. If it was the same for an exterior, you're going to have these two holes and those three holes taking off removing and putting the new gasket on for the front plate, the front exhaust. All right, let me get the, the I have the chassis here, and I'll show you what corresponding holes it is. All right, can we see? Let me, uh, <coughs> let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so it's these two holes, these two holes, these three holes, lower it down, so these two, these two, these three, and that one right there on the bottom. 
So you have a total of two, four, six, eight screws that hold this heat exchanger in. All right, let's get back to the... All right, so let's do this anymore. All right, so now, what do we need to do? <clears throat> I would hit this with a vacuum, and I would pull out this O-ring and put the new O-ring in. I would take my Dremel, and clean in here, real good, because you got to get the new heat exchanger and the new O-ring in there. So clean in there real good. I would pull the filter out. So I would pull this filter out and clean it because you're going to have a brand new heat exchanger. All right. Um, yes, I would blow out the fan, vacuum it, the burner. If I'm going to reuse this burner. Now you see there's a gasket on it. You're going to be putting a new gasket. You're not going to, you're going to blow this out with about 100 psi of air. So of course you're going to need your compressor. Blow it out. If you have a soft plastic bristle brush, hit it with a soft plastic bristle brush. Again, on the bottom, you have the air. You want to pop these holes, make sure they're clean, brush them, vacuum them, blow them out. Get this all nice and clean because you're going to be putting this back into a brand new heat exchanger. <coughs> all right, YouTube. Um, again, if you're going to be swapping out the thermal fuse, where's the thermal fuse? So if you're going to be swapping out this thermal fuse, you're actually going to have to take this all out and start putting this all back together. So you're actually, again, you're going to have to be very, very gentle with this, um, with this unit. So to put this thermal fuse back in, you got to feed this through till you get to that black part which is in the front. You're going to clip these on. Then this here is going to go get mated back onto this. Then this here, you're going to get this back, clip this back onto the side. Like that. Make sure these are up in the clips. And like I said, this is a dirty especially if it's an outdoor unit this is a dirty job get look oh, oh, that's got to go back this way if that goes here and then this one goes here you got to make sure it's fed back through because you want the two ends to be meeting each other make sure that you're And I got the air condition on in here. So that's your part of your thermal fuse right there. You want these two come down this way. That's going to get mated back up this way. Then you're going to take this piece with this. And you're going to get this back onto that side right there. With your clips. And that's that. And that's if you're just replacing the thermal fuse, not the heat exchanger. So again, you got to be very delicate. All right. All right, YouTube. Um, oh. Um, I apologize to people that I can't, I haven't responded to. For some reason, I cannot answer certain comments on YouTube. So if I go in through, say, my phone or my iPad, 
It will not give me your comment. It'll give me ones from months ago. If I go on another, like my piece, my office PC, I get the, I could see the comment, but I cannot respond to it because it's not under my, um, what is that, my account. So, for those of you that I didn't, and I know there was two people out there that had real good questions, I email me. Every single email, excuse me, every single video has my email. So e you can put the comment in, which helps on, for YouTube, but email me the question. You know, put the, com the question in the comment, but email me the question because I check them every morning, afternoon, night, and I respond to them and tell you to give me a call, like in the evening, okay? So every single um, video has my email down at the bottom, all right? Um, I guess that's it. Uh, all right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and you all be safe out there. And I will see you on the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.